Hello, I'm Dr. Jerry Tennant, uh, speaking to you from my office in Dallas, Texas. This morning I'd like to discuss with you my method for treating people with chronic disease. To understand this approach, we have to understand a little bit about some electronic terms. Everyone knows the, word, the term pH, but few of us really understand what it really means. pH stands for potential hydrogen, and basically it's a measure of voltage. For example, a pH of zero is considered a plus 400 millivolts, a pH of seven is zero millivolts, and a pH of 14 is a minus 400 millivolts. So what does that really mean? Well, if we think about voltage in our homes, we always think about plus voltage. For example, we talk about having 110 volts coming into our home and we never think about negative voltage. So positive voltage is what we're generally talking about in a conductive system like a copper wire. However, if we talk about solutions, then we can talk about there being an excess of electrons or an electron donor, and that is from 7 to 14, which means you have a minus sign in front of it indicating that there are electrons available to do work. We can also call that alkaline. On the other hand, if we have a solution that has a deficiency of electrons and it uh, be has become an electron stealer, then we put a plus sign in front of it, and so anything from 0 to 7 is looking for electrons or trying to steal electrons from wherever they can find them, and that's also called acidic. So when we talk about their pH being acidic, we're talking about the solution being deficient in electrons or an electron stealer. And when we're talking about alkaline, we're talking about the solution having electrons available to do work. So there is voltage available. Now this is one of the most important parts of the concept, and that has to do with the fact that every cell in the body is designed to run at approximately 20 millivolts. So a cell is doing its job and needs to have some repair work done, it'll kick its voltage up to approximately minus 50 millivolts. At 50 millivolts, the cell has enough horsepower to begin the process of healing itself, and then it goes back to the operating voltage of uh, 20 millivolts. Now if a cell begins to lose its voltage, then several things happen. At about minus 15 millivolts, you get tired, at 10 millivolts, you get sick, and at 5 millivolts, your organs start, uh, stop working. Then if you go past zero, that's like taking a flashlight battery and putting it in your flashlight backwards. Obviously, that doesn't work, and that's called reversal of polarity. So if you reverse the polarity by going past zero and get down to a plus 5 or a plus 10 or plus 15 millivolts, then four bad things happen. First of all, a reverse polarity damages the DNA in your cells, and the damaged DNA means you've damaged the control mechanism of the cell, and thus you have a cancer cell. So you develop tumors, you develop pain, you get chronic infections, and you have a lack of oxygen whenever you have low voltage and particularly a reversal of polarity. Now once you understand how important voltage is in keeping your system working, you begin to realize that in chronic disease you always have a loss of voltage and often a reversal of polarity and so the solution for chronic disease begins with restoring voltage and you do that by putting in ele enough electrons to push the voltage from down here in the positive area up not only to the 20 millivolts of operating voltage but you have to get it up to 50 millivolts of electron donor if you're going to heal things, and if you have tumors or serious infections, you have to get up to about 70 millivolts of uh, electron donor status in order for the body to have enough power to heal itself. So putting in electrons to push the voltage back up is key to healing all chronic disease. Here you see that we're at normal uh, operating voltage and the voltage kicks up to about 50 millivolts to start the healing process. So how do I put more electrons into my system? Vitamin C, uh, silicon, most of the things that are really useful are electron donors. In addition, the body uses minerals as on-off switches. So almost everybody that has a chronic disease will also be depleted in minerals. 
The way you test minerals is by dropping uh, samples of the minerals on your tongue and they should taste horrible. If they taste anything but horrible, you're deficient in that mineral. The reason it doesn't work very well to do a blood test to test for minerals is because the majority of minerals, over 90% of the minerals, are in the tissues and the blood is simply serving as a trucking system getting uh, the minerals from place to place. We also need oxygen to make our system work and the amount of oxygen that can be in a cell is dictated by the amount of voltage of the cell. This is called Bohr's Law or Bohr Effect. Here you can see in this graph the amount of oxygen that can get into the cell if your voltage is at a minus 30 millivolts is this much. If it drops to 10 millivolts you get in much less. So the oxygen saturation goes from 100 percent down close to 80 percent by just dropping your voltage 20 millivolts. So when your voltage is low then your oxygen level is low. So people who have low voltage, which is almost always the case when you have chronic disease, will be depleted in oxygen. And of course, the higher altitude you live, the less oxygen that's available and the less pressure as well. And so that's a compounding factor. So let's summarize. People who are, have chronic illness will always have decreased voltage. They'll often have a reversal of polarity. They will almost always have loss of neurochemicals. They will have deficient minerals, and they'll have a liver that doesn't work. Those things are simply characteristic of almost all chronic diseases. So how do you fix that? Well, you want to turn on the control mechanism. Control the mechanism are the neurochemicals and the minerals. Um, and then simultaneously with, with uh, starting the process of restoring neurochemicals and minerals, you need to be sure that the patient has normal voltage. If you have low voltage, no matter what you do, things won't work. It's simply like taking, you can take a brand new car, take the battery out of it, and it's not going anywhere. And so it is with us. If we don't have voltage, nothing we do works. And so we began to restore voltage. The most efficient way is with the biomodulator, but you can also use other things uh, like raw fruits and vegetables, like vitamin C, etc., all of which are good electron donors.